For three years, Windows Longhorn spent an astronomically large time in development, going through three themes and many cool features. And overall, delirium set in within the Windows team at Microsoft. After being shown off at multiple events with constantly delayed roadmaps, a new direction was needed for Longhorn to get out the door. So with the help of Windows Development President, Jim Alchin, the codebase that the team spent three years on was reset in August 2004 with a brand new one. It's from here where our story continues. We begin our time on the new code base with build 3790, a similar number to where Windows Server 2003 was at the time, more specifically its first service pack, which was in release candidacy at this time. With it being an almost exact fork of Server 2003's current build, almost no indication of it being Longhorn exists in the system, aside from it having the XP interface and Luna theme. This continues into the various builds with the number 5000, built many times across August and September 2004 with different build tags, reflecting how the various Windows teams got built in the new codebase earlier or later than others. All these builds changed from 3790 was a change of logo in the About Windows tab, now listed as LH instead of XP. By September though, things had unified within the whole team with build 5001, which changed a few things around since then. Most prominently was a default background of Bliss, just with a picture of a Texas Longhorn on top of it. However, a few minor changes to system components existed here as well. Regardless, not much here changed, but these changes would come just like in the pre-reset era. This early development on the new codebase would be known as the Omega-13 period, where as many features from the pre-reset Longhorn builds as possible needed to be salvaged and reconstructed with strict guidelines on what could be brought into these builds. For many months into 2005, as the Windows team toiled away on development, Microsoft would remain quiet on what was going on with Longhorn as very few people knew of the reset outside of the company at this point. And as a result, much of this period is shrouded in secrecy, even to this day, and in fact even the builds I just mentioned weren't leaked until over 15 years later in January 2020. However, the wraps of this new codebase had to be taken off somewhere, and what better time than the 2005 Windows Hardware Engineering Conference that April. And that's what they did there. This conference showed off build 5048, containing the long-awaited arrow theme in a build for the first time publicly. This build also contains a brand new start menu and updated taskbar, as well as Sego UI being the new system font in the arrow theme, though XP's Luna theme remains in a broken state, becoming one of the last builds to contain that theme. Windows Media Player 10 also made its debut in a Longhorn build. Meanwhile, some of the old pre-reset features are back, such as folder information in Windows Explorer, as well as the Desktop Window Manager, or DWM. Even the old Slate installer made its return here. Unfortunately, despite the many advancements in development over at Microsoft since the reset, enthusiasts and attendees of WinHEC 2005 were disappointed at their regression of features since 2004 as build 5048 more closely resembled XP than the late era pre-reset builds did, and despite being called Beta 1, it was still far out from actually getting into that state. Nonetheless, Microsoft pressed forth, with speech recognition software being shown off with build 5054 at WinHEC 2005, and a new background arrived in build 5060, also at the conference. This leads us into build 5098, featuring a slew of new features, such as a new taskbar theme and darken start button, as well as updated arrow themes, with the full arrow theme looking quite similar to the final version, but the basic theme still had work to be done. 
However, this came at the cost of the venerable Luna theme, which had been around since XP four years prior, as well as the old XP desktop manager. Also changed around were the setup theme and the login screen, now in a blue color. WinFX, the set of libraries that contained the Avalon graphical library, became a core component of the operating system here, later becoming .NET Framework 3.0, and virtual folders made their glorious return in this build. This build marked a milestone for Microsoft. Practically all of the features they could salvage from the pre-reset period were implemented, bringing an end to the Omega-13 period of Longhorn's development. So what better time to celebrate than finally giving Longhorn an actual name and a beta? It's now July 2005, over four years into Longhorn's development. Microsoft's got a financial analyst meeting on the 22nd, and they want to impress at that meeting. So what do they do? Give Windows Longhorn an actual name, and that name would be Vista. Vista was chosen after a period of 10 months of ideas, due to it reflecting nicely with the cornerstones of the operating system's purpose its capabilities for users, as well as its impacts on them, among other things, which is also the basis for its marketing slogan, clear, connected, confident. Perhaps ironic given the circumstances of Vista's development up to this point. This meeting also brought a major announcement to the table. Beta 1 was finally coming later that month. Internally though, things were still a little bit scrambled with the Windows team compounded with Alchin deciding to retire after Vista's release. Within the team, schedules for when the operating system would release were in flux, between May and August 2006 at this point, as well as a new edition segmentation. This resulted in an Uber edition of Vista being planned, containing extra features from the professional edition, which would ultimately morph into the ultimate edition. All totaled, instead of being confident, the Windows team was, in fact, chaotic. Regardless, Beta 1 arrived as planned on July 27, 2005, as build 5112, mostly resembling build 5098, but with some new audio and networking stacks, as well as some slight error updates. It was still a long way to go from release, but marked a major milestone for the team. From here, Microsoft showed off Vista at the 2005 Professional Developer Conference in Los Angeles that September with build 5219. This new build got rid of most instances of Longhorn in the system and introduced a new Media Center version, as well as more error updates and a nifty feature known as Flip 3D, which allowed users to flip through windows using DWM's capabilities. This build also brought back an old friend from the pre-reset days, the sidebar. This new incarnation ran in a separate process from Explorer this time around, and introduced widget programs known as gadgets inside the sidebar. Microsoft also formally introduced the version SKUs here, of which 5219 was an ultimate build, and told developers that this would be known as a Community Test Preview, or CTP and more would be released monthly for a while until a proper Beta 2 was ready. Also announced here would be a firm release date, the RTM build in August 2006, and retail ability by November 15th. The next CTP would be released in October 2005 for beta testers, as build 5231. This brought the arrival of a more advanced sound manager for programs, as well as Media Player 11 formally. November did not have a CTP as it was cancelled, but there was still build 5259 released that month. It brought some major UI changes in the setup, like a new background, as well as introducing the start menu's final icon, an orb. Also introduced here would be a built-in antivirus program, Windows Anti-Spyware. In December, its CTP build, 5270, brought a name change to Windows Anti-Spyware over to Windows Defender, and was nearing feature completeness. Microsoft closed 2005 off strong after a weak start, and optimism was even greater for 2006, Vista's last development year. 
While there would be no CTP for January 2006, there would be one for February, build 5308, which was the first feature complete build for Vista. The upgrade functionality made a debut here, and more virtual folders would be introduced. The next month, Microsoft announced that UEFI support, worked on by Intel as a means of replacing BIOS, which was common on computers at that time, would not be supported until Vista's first service pack, as well as a change in its release timeline. Everything from Beta 2 onward would be pushed back, including the RTM and retail release dates, now at October 2006 and January 2007, respectively which had been brewing at Microsoft since November 2005. Luckily, Beta 2 was now set for May 2006, and seemed on track to hit by then. Until that time, a few more builds were needed, the first of which was the February CTP refresh, build 5342. Caused by feedback from the original CTP's release, this brought more UI changes with programs in Arrow, as well as a new startup message. This took the place of a March CTP due to not being up to CTP standards, which would follow into the April build as well, known as the April External Developer Workstation, or EDW. This build, 5365, had a few UI changes as well as new backgrounds, but also the loss of the Hold'em built-in game due to sensitivity issues, though it was made an ultimate download later. All totaled, Things were looking bright for Vista going into Beta 2. After nearly a year's gap between Betas, Beta 2 finally released on May 23rd, 2006, with a build number of 5384 at WinHEC2006. This build would eventually release to the general public, the first such build to do so, with many complaints of speed issues and bugs from the public as well as Microsoft developers. Next up in the progress came release candidate builds to fix these issues, which needed a bit of work to get to. While these were being worked on, the XML paper specification, or XPS, that Vista would use for print spooling would get into a conflict with Adobe's PDF format, its main competition and Microsoft allowed OEMs to remove user-accessible aspects of the format, if they so wished, and also dropped PC-to-PC -PC Sync from Vista's release. The next build, 5456, brought major performance enhancements compared to Beta 2, as well as a check for the drivers in the setup to rank in the Windows Experience Index for usability of the system and an overhauled user account control, Microsoft's answer to security exploits that XP received. Nonetheless, performance issues and bugs still persisted, as well as complaints of buggy and bloated code, described as having 50 million lines of it in the OS by insiders. Luckily, these bugs would whittle down as time went on, as shown in build 5472 in July with even more bug fixes and performance improvements, as well as a slightly new mouse cursor and a blue-colored arrow UI. However, at its financial analyst meeting that month, Microsoft attempted to demonstrate the speech recognition of Windows Vista. And this happened. Dear Mom, comma. <laughs> Fix Ant. <laughs> Delete that. Delete, select all. <laughs> okay. This proved to be a bit of an embarrassment for the company, but was caused by a bug setting the audio gain too high, which would be resolved quickly. After more builds that fixed bugs and improved speed, especially startup speed, release candidate one, Build 5600, released in September 2006, serving as a leap in performance compared to Beta 2. Another build, 5744, would be released the next month, and allow for arrow window color changing, becoming the last of Vista's major UI changes, and also fixed long-standing compatibility issues. The bug count slowly kept creeping down, but still wasn't enough for the RTM to happen. 
and as such, Bill 5744 would be designated as Release Candidate 2 by Microsoft. It would be the last public build, as the team had to get to work to get to the RTM build. The team's first attempt at an RTM build would be build 5824 on October 16th. Unfortunately, one last misfortune would be thrown at the Windows team's way. Upgrading from XP would destroy any system, and a fresh reinstall would be needed, and it would be considered a major showstopper bug. As a result, the RTM would be delayed into early November. The final development build would be build 5840, featuring a new set of default wallpapers, but also serving as the final build with the XP sound scheme. In the end, build 6000, after the NT version of Vista 6.0, would be built on November 1st, 2006. A week later on Wednesday, November 8th, 2006, this build would be finalized as the RTM build for Windows Vista, finally bringing a closure to five and a half years of development and a codebase reset. For the Windows team, it was a miracle that it got out at all. At the end of November, businesses could get the Enterprise Edition via volume licensing, and at long last, after four years of delays, Windows Vista released to retail store shelves on Tuesday, January 30th, 2007, with a launch gala hosted for the operating system's launch that day. But was the six-year wait worth it? To many consumers, not really. Users complained about the instability and bloat of Vista, as well as its slow performance compared to XP, and many users stuck with that operating system for years to come. Luckily, Microsoft would work to improve Vista with service packs throughout 2008 and 2009, but the negative image stuck, and it still goes down as one of Microsoft's biggest blunders in all of its history for both its hostile reception at launch and its truly chaotic development history. It's fair to say that a lot of lessons were learned for all parties with the history of Windows Vista. Thank you for watching this development of Windows Vista. If you liked it, please give a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I hope you guys enjoyed it as 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 much as I did making the videos. See you in the next one.